Over the last couple of years, I have really expanded my reading habits into genres and authors that I'd never read before, or at least hadn't read as much of. But romance just so has my heart, and there are four authors in particular whose books I will always pick up. It does not matter what it is that they're writing, I will always pre-order, be the first in line. So today I want to tell you who those four authors are because they all have books out in 2023 and I cannot wait to read them. First up on the list is our Lord and Savior Emily Henry. This is an Emily Henry stan account. I love everything Emily Henry writes. Beach Read in particular is my favorite romance ever written. It's so good. It's about two rival authors who end up in neighboring beach houses for the summer and end up swapping genres. She's also got two other books that have come out that are both wildly popular. One is called People We Meet on Vacation in the US or You and Me on Vacation in the UK. And the other one is called Book Lovers. I love all of her books, but Beach Read is definitely my favorite. I think that the reason I love Emily Henry is how self-aware and like intellectually and emotionally mature her prose is and her characters are. I think if you look at the heroines of someone like Sophie Kinsella, for example, they can just feel very like flighty and like I don't know anyone in real life who's like this, whereas every single character in an Emily Henry novel you feel like you know them. You feel like, oh, that's, I have friends that are like that. I know people that are like that. I went to school with people who are like that. I work with people who are like that. It feels so accessible and realistic, those characters. And it means that when she puts them in situations that require a little bit of a suspension of disbelief, you know, the coincidence is really strong or whatever, it means that you believe it a little bit more because you're really grounded in those characters. The language is really strong as well in her book. I think that she does a really good job, again, of being like intellectually and emotionally mature, but without seeming pretentious. I think that the interiority in her books is super witty. Like her characters are just inherently funny people. And so their thoughts are funny and the things they say are funny. And it just makes reading it such a pleasure. As well, I know I mentioned like putting characters in situations that require a certain suspension of disbelief, but I think that on the whole, her romance novels don't rely that heavily on unrealistic things. At the time of filming this, it's like six days until Emily Henry's book Happy Place comes out, but by the time you see it, it's probably just released. So if you haven't already, go grab Happy Place. I can already tell you it's going to be a bestseller. I've seen everybody talking about it. The early copies are getting such good reviews. I genuinely cannot wait. I've literally avoided making plans for next weekend so that I can read this book. My second go-to romance author is Abby Jimenez. Abby Jimenez wrote The Happy Ever After Playlist, The Friend Zone, Life's Too Short, and Part of Your World. I don't think I'm missing any. Uh, the Happy Ever After playlist, Life's Too Short, and The Friend Zone are all kind of linked together because of sort of side characters in each one, but they are standalone novels. And then Part of Your World, which I think is her most recent one, is completely separate to that world and is sort of like a small town, fish out of water kind of romance. And I absolutely love it. The next book Abby Jimenez is putting out, which actually is already out, I think it came out last week or the week before at the time of filming this is called Yours Truly and that is based on a side character from Part of Your World. So clearly we're going for the same sort of vibe as the other sort of trilogy. But the reason that I love Abby Jimenez so much is her cinnamon roll boyfriends. As a romance author I can tell you myself that writing good romantic leads is really, really hard because they're not the main character. They're the romantic lead because they're being played opposite your point of view character, typically. Now, I think most of Abby Jimenez's books are multi-POV, and maybe that's why she does such a good job with it, but the men in her books are just incredible. I want to meet all of them and snuggle all of them and do other things with all of them. They are wonderful. I think especially Life's Too Short, Adrian. I love him so much. Like I said, Yours Truly is out now. I haven't actually gotten to read it yet, but my intention is to do so this coming weekend. Got a couple library books I've got to get through first. 
At number three, we have Beth O'Leary. Now, if you read romance and you haven't heard of The Flat Share, I would love to know <laughs> what rock you've been under. It came out years ago, but it is so popular. It just got made into a show, which I haven't seen because I don't have the appropriate streaming platform, but I haven't heard anything about the show, if it's good, if it's not good. The book, however, is spectacular, and it is not her only book. She wrote The Flat Share, The Switch, The Road Trip, The No Show, and I have read all of them. Loved The Flat Share, liked The Switch, loved The Road Trip, loved The No Show. I will say The No Show, which is her most recent book until this new one that's coming out, is kind of the epitome of like, she's everything, he's just Ken. A lot of the criticism is like, why are all three of these women simping for this guy who is like nothing special? Which I understand that criticism. However, there is a twist in the no-show that other people say they saw coming. I personally did not. So <laughs> you can say what you want about my level of insight by the fact that I didn't see that coming, but whatever. I mean, I guess there's kind of two twists technically. One is about the way it's structured and the other one is about one specific uh, person and it's that second one that I didn't see coming. Just to clarify for anyone who's read it. All of her books are really good and to be honest when I was writing this list I really struggled to articulate why I really like her books. I think her characters are just really endearing like especially the women that she writes and it just makes you root for them and it makes you be like along for the ride even when ridiculous stuff is happening. I think the flat share and the road trip for me especially were like that. And I think her books just have like really strong hooks. Like there's a really interesting premise and she's really good at like setting up that premise and following through on it in a way that does subvert your expectations, but also feels like fulfilling of what it was that you were wanting it to be. And that ability can't be undersold because I've read so many books lately that have had amazing premises and really poor execution. Beth O'Leary is amazing at being like, here's a really ridiculous situation, let's run with it and she does it in an amazing and really fun and engaging way. Her new book is called The Wake Up Call and I don't know off the top of my head when that's coming out so I'll put it up on screen but this is it. And I have obviously already pre-ordered that as well. For those of you who don't know I'm on a book buying ban for this year and I pre-ordered a lot of these books last year and I knew in December that I was going to be doing this ban and it was like the very end of December that I was able to pre-order her book and I was like just a couple days later and this would have been breaking the ban but I got it in just in the nick of time so thank god. And finally at number four we have Christina Lauren. Now Christina Lauren is not actually one person it's two people. It's a friend duo that write books together and I think that they're probably the most controversial inclusion to this list. I think that they get a lot more mixed reviews than the other authors that I've discussed today, but I personally love their stories. The first one that I read was The Unhoneymooners last year, which I absolutely loved. I thought it was fantastic. I think it was my first five-star read of the year, maybe. Then I read something wilder, which was good. And then I read The Soulmate Equation, which was so good. I also recently read Love and Other Words, which I think is their most popular title. I'm not gonna say too much about that yet because it's gonna be my April wrap up video. So if you're not already, be sure to hit subscribe so that you see that when that comes out. But Christina and Lauren have a really extensive backlist. They have written a ton and I haven't read as much of it as I would like. But one of the reasons for that is I think they used to write a lot like steamier, almost like fanfic, style stuff. That's not typically my bag. I much prefer the lighter rom com -y type stuff that they write now, the stuff that I have read, and I think that that's what puts them on this list for me. So though I haven't read all of their backlist, I would still say they are a can't miss author for me because anything new that's coming out I will jump on. I think that they write such amazing chemistry and maybe that comes from the fact that they used to write steamier stuff so they know how to like bring that heat and that sizzle onto the page. Each book that they write is super different as well like going into even kind of other genres like something wilder is very like 
adventure, like Wild West kind of romance. And like Soulmate Equation is very like sciency and a very different kind of trope. And so I really like the variety that you get there. And like Beth O'Leary, all of their books have such great hooks. Like you just really understand from the beginning, like this is the premise that we're going for. I also think that they're masterful at pacing. I think especially for the stuff that doesn't have that sort of other genre stuff, it can feel really difficult to like choose what scenes you're going to include like in contemporary romance that are really going to make an impact. And if you choose the wrong moments and the wrong scenes, it can really impact the pacing in a negative way. They're always choosing the exact right moments, creating the exact right moments in order for us to feel continually invested in the outcome. Their new book coming out on the 16th of May is called The True Love Experiment. And I'm gonna be honest, the hook sounds a little bit out there. I think it's gonna be about a romance novelist and a documentary filmmaker who decide to like create a documentary about her falling in love. And I'm assuming she's gonna fall in love with him. Like, I don't know, I haven't read it, so it's not a spoiler or anything. That's just me filling in the the gaps and the subtext there. But like with Beth O'Leary, I fully trust Christina Lauren to follow through on a premise and do so, like I said, with amazing chemistry and good pacing. And I cannot wait. This is gonna be such a good year for romance. I cannot believe all of these people have romance out. Some honorable mentions that didn't quite make it to the list, but whose books I still seriously recommend and would pre-order if I saw them come up, are Emily Wibberley and Austin Siegman Broca, who wrote The Roughest Draft, and most recently Do I Know You, which is one of my favorite books that I read in March, as well as Alison Cochran, who wrote The Charm Offensive and Kiss Her Once For Me. Really amazing queer romance, such good characters. So there you have it. Those are my four can't miss romance authors and two honorable mentions. I've read some really great books this month and we'll be reading some good ones next month as well, including from these amazing authors. Authors. So if you're not already, be sure to hit subscribe so that you can see my reviews of those when they come out. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye-bye!